See if this thing's gonna follow me. There it goes. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Brian. You're watching the Build a Place channel. Today's problem is a air compressor that just don't want to start. I've tried everything. It'll start and run for a few seconds or whatever, and then it just backfires after that every time we try to start it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try the uh, see if I'm getting a good spark constantly. I really believe the problem is with the low oil sensor, but there is plenty of oil in the uh, in the engine, so I don't think that's a problem with the engine. I think it's electrical or electronic type problem. So let's check the spark on this thing. See if we got a good spark. I believe it's got a good. Spark. Decent spark to start, and then I think the the controller takes over and it sees that there's no full level. Oh, what I need to do take the spark plug out. What am I doing? I got a spark checker. I keep it in line, so I don't know why I was taking it off. So I just put this in line. I'm going to turn the fuel to the off position, turn the engine to the on position, and see what kind of spark I get. We got it at the start. We get, a, we get a good spark. Then we get that pop. So I want to take a look at these wires over in here and see what's going on. Maybe, maybe that's the problem. So, I'm going to take this thing off. But I know I'm getting a good spark, but I think that this runs for, I think this thing runs for just a couple seconds to see, you know, until electronics or whatever takes over. So, I'm going to go over here and look at this. All right, I'm just going to take and pull these wires out of this bundle. This don't look real promising. This bundle of wires. On everywhere. The sensor I think is right up behind in here. That's where I believe the sensor is. That feels like it goes through the, the case of the engine. So I'm gonna keep pulling this. Got a tie strap on it. But what I'm gonna try to do is look at these wires and make sure they have good connections. Maybe the vibration from the engine is causing a problem. I can't figure it out yet but we're gonna get it down to where we do figure it out. Getting these wires pulled out so I can get, make heads or tails what goes where. And it's, shop's not real bright. There's one wire going nowhere, which may not be important, but I would assume every wire should have something in it. I don't know, I never didn't see an end that don't have something in it. This this wire here it doesn't have nothing. It's going down. I think this bundle is this bundle here. One of them goes down to the the meter. Or I guess maybe both of them go. Yeah, both of them are going down to this meter. For some reason, it needs two bundles to get down there. But I don't see any wires that look like they're open ended. Now, this wire is coming out. This one wire here is coming out from what I believe is the oil sensor. And then there's another wire. These two wires appear to be coming out of the oil sensor. So I think they have a, they're bullet connectors, maybe not. They look like they're bullet connectors, but there's, yeah, they're bullet connectors. So let's see if I can get this apart. Get these bullets apart and then we can do a continuity and see if it 
see if what kind of continuity we're getting on that. So set this to 200 ohms. Set it up on top. Somewhere I can read it. I'm assuming this is when the oil level is right, it's going to be normally closed contacts. So I should see continuity between here and there. And it's reading open. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get down here on the. Make sure I'm getting the right spot. I don't know. I'm seeing what appears to be an open. I think we need to bring a light in here to be able to see exactly what's going on. That's there. That sensor, well, that sensor only has one one wire coming off, so it's probably going to the case. So let's go between here and the case. See what we got. It appears to be an open open circuit. So that's probably right. It probably needs to be open. And then it probably goes to ground if the level's low, maybe. Let's put everything else back together. This just don't make sense why there's an extra wire in this bundle. I can't get this bullet to come off. working it's reading open so that's kind of makes sense a little bit and that goes into this little module here So, that's why it goes up. Why going up into? I didn't really figure this thing out. I think I'm going to take take this cover off. Find out where. Where the wire is going for the spark plug, because I don't even see where that where the spark plug is. Where it's leaving off to. And I can't get this pull it apart. I can get this apart, maybe that'll clue me into something going on here. Appears to be a bullet connector, but it doesn't seem like it wants to come apart. Got two needle nose pliers. I'm gonna try to get this connector apart. That's going to that, what I believe is the sensor. Okay, that's the part. Let's, I'm gonna try to see what happens if I try to start it now. See if it does anything. So turn the turn the fuel on. The switch is already on. The wires aren't going to touch anything. So let's see what bring this back so you can let's see what's going on. See if this back part is on. Let's say it wants to start. 
Nope. It's on that back firing thing. Still. So it's acting like you want to just start it first. And then it's going to do that back firing stuff. So I don't know what. I got to do a little more digging. Before I go too deep into this thing, I was just thinking that um, maybe it could be a spark plug. That would make sense. It would fire off and then if it's not getting a good um, spark or getting it's contaminated or whatever, it's going to short itself out. So I have another Predator engine. Hopefully it has the same size plug or plug that's close enough. So I'm going to just leave this for, for now. And I'm gonna, before I dig into all this, I'm just gonna try a spark plug. That's real easy to do. So let me go get a spark plug from that other engine. Got a spark plug out of the other Predator engine that I have. So we're gonna see if this matches up and see if that makes a difference before I start. There's a lot of wires there and I don't think there's any diagram for that. So let me just try this spark plug. See if this may fix the problem. I don't know. I, this is a, this is the first predator engine I got. I have another predator engine on. A, I got the other plug from it on a trash pump. So I'm gonna check. See, they look the same. They're similar. FST F7. F6TC. Well, they're off by one. The one in the air compressor is an F6TC, and the one that come off the trash pump is an F7TC. But they look the same height, so I don't think I have to worry about anything hitting inside. And they look the same thread, so I'm gonna try it. Looks like the dead thread's in there. The threads are the same. It's probably close enough for, for starting it up. I won't run it. If it does run, I won't run it very long on that until I get the right, right plug. Okay. Plug that in. Make sure none of these wires are not messing with another wire to touch any other turn. Switch the on position. Choke. I had left the fuel. Fuel's on, so let's see if this thing starts. There you go, Brandon. We got it going. Okay. okay. Spark plug. I never would have thought it was a spark plug that would make this thing not work. This is this is the first Predator engine I had bought. Never had any problems with this thing. It's it doesn't like to start in the cold. That's the only problem I've ever had. And the other engine I have in the the uh, the Predator is a trash pump. Never had a problem with that. So. I don't know, they're different than the Briggs, like I said, that I have probably 10, 12 Briggs engines that I've never ever had a spark plug give me this kind of problem. So if you have trouble with your Predator and not starting and giving you that backfire, do the simplest thing. Buy a new plug, put it in there, and try it out. Thanks for watching the channel. Hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up, leave comments. Uh, you can tell us maybe that I'm an idiot because I put all these wires out without at least checking and putting a new spark plug in, but I'll accept being an idiot. I got my compressor back up and running. I can start doing the work I need to do again. I decided to run out of Napa and I picked up the bracement plug. So I'm going to put that in now. That way I can get this thing off this table and down on the ground since I've got grandsons here. I'm going to this thing out. 
try this new plug out, make sure we got it running, and then we can get it on the floor. Pop it outside. Add a little bit more. I let it sit a minute. It put it back in, it didn't look like it did whatever. I know, it looks like it skipped those two and then puts the full one. I didn't put the old plug back in, just fill the hole with new plug in. Look at the gap. Gap don't look bad. I'm gonna try it. Difficult getting these things started in here. It's in such an odd spot. And the extension they give you it sort of helps a little bit, but then I don't think it truly really helps. I don't think it lines it up any better than if you'd use your fingers. There. <laughs> there, I got it now. If it works now, we're getting on the ground. I'll take it outside. Let it run for a little bit out there. And Make sure everything else works still on it. Okay. Fuel was left on. Turn the ignition on. Pull the choke. I think we got it. So I'm gonna have a grandson. Wait, wait, we can get pulled down now. He's right here. <laughs> I'm gonna get this thing down. On the ground. 